All right, welcome back, congressional committees. All right, so we have three main types of committees, standing, joint, and then special or select committees. The last one is the same thing. Those terms can be used interchangeably. Standing, joint, and select or special. All right, so let's go through each of them. Start with the most important one, which is standing committees. Standing committees are permanent. This is where proposed bills are first referred. So when a representative or a senator writes a bill, uh, the Speaker of the House or the Majority Leader, depending on if we're in the House or the Senate, will then refer the bill to a committee. The committee that they refer the bill to is a standing committee. This permanent bill or this permanent uh, committee, they deal with the same topic of bills. So, for instance, you might have a standing committee on the budget or on education or on energy or on agriculture and all these different areas. So. The idea is that the people on these committees will gain some level of expertise learning about the area that they are making policy on. It's the most important type of committee, again, because of those two reasons. They're permanent and bills are sent there first. So this is actually where the majority of work in Congress is done is within standing committees. And we'll talk about exactly what happens in committee um, in future slides and videos. But for right now, we'll say that they hold hearings on the implementation of laws after patch passage as well. So not only do standing committees matter before the bill gets made or, you know, bill becomes a law, but once it has become a law, standing committees check up to make sure the bill is being implemented properly. So they have a role before and after the lawmaking process. Joint committees are said to be joint because they include both representatives and senators. So that's the way they're joint, members of the House and Senator both there. The specific type of joint committee that we're going to care about the most is known as a conference committee. Conference committee includes both representatives and senators, again, because it is a joint committee, and its purpose is to resolve differences between the House and Senate versions of the same bill. So for example, if the House passed a version that was slightly different than the Senate's version, so maybe it got edited and um, marked up in a different way than the Senate's version did. The president needs to sign one single unified bill. He can't sign the House or the Senate version. The same bill must pass both the House and the Senate. So we would then create a conference committee to work out and to resolve the differences between the different versions and just agree on one single version of the bill. Select or special committees, these are temporary. They have a specific purpose. It's usually related to some kind of investigation. And once that investigation has run up, then it moves on or it's actually disbanded and it doesn't cease, it ceases to be because we don't need it anymore. So my example here is um, Congress was holding hearings about baseball and steroids. So once they decided that they'd spend enough taxpayer dollars to, to find out if Major League Baseball players take steroids or not, they disbanded that committee. Other key examples would be after September 11th. There were committees that they formed to try to find out what happened, what caused it, were, was it preventable. Um, Hillary Clinton, Benghazi is another example. The House has been doing special and select committee investigations into that for a while. Um, so again, these are not permanent, temporary, investigatory. All right, so what about the leaders of the committee chair, or of the committees? That position is called being committee chair, chairman, chairwoman. Um, they are always a person from the majority party. And usually they are the person from the majority party with the most seniority on that committee. Um, so always majority party, usually the member of the majority party with the most seniority on that specific committee. And you can see below the picture of diversity there and House Committee Chairman. All right, what about people being on the committee? So basically you have representatives and senators and they each get assigned to various committees. They can be on multiple committees and they are on multiple committees. But how do you decide who's on what committee? Well, the idea is that you typically want to be on committees that will help you to gain prominence if that's your goal. So like Paul Ryan was on the budget committee and that helped gain him prominence and notoriety. And he eventually was vice presidential candidate for Mitt Romney. Um, or the desire to get reelected, meaning that you want to be on a committee that deals with things that matter to your constituents. So if you're from a farm state, you might want to be on an agricultural committee, if that makes sense. Foreign affairs, prominence. Budget, prominence. So it depends on what your goals are. This has been a La Money production.